the key to this is the fact that I don't have to have the best hand to win. I just have to have the winning hand to win. In other words, I don't have to have a made hand. If you have to have made hands to win at poker, you're not gonna win very much. You have to be able to bluff. You have to be able to take advantage of your fold equity when you get a chance. Hey there, Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. It has been an extremely, extremely busy work, working hard, both at my job. As you guys know, I've been traveling to Ohio like every weekend. I think three out of the last four weekends to work on my mom's house and stuff like that. So, whoo, busy, busy. Is there any time for poker? A little. Not quite as much as I want, but I did get to play at the Jack this week when I was in Cleveland. And we are gonna go all back over a hand from last week, the you be the villain hand. Evidently, I either don't explain myself well or you guys aren't getting it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over that. I'm gonna explain myself better. Maybe you can see what I'm talking about because I got lots of comments. Hey guys, it's Wednesday, May 1st. I'm on my way into Wednesday Poker League. Uh, I have finished on the final table like five out of the last six weeks. So I've been doing well. I think I'm gonna do well tonight. I think I'm gonna win it. Um, I did get one of the first two places in the World Series of Poker Contest, so I got one of the $1,500 entries. My buddy Stone got the other one, and uh, then three other guys got the $1,000 entry, but I was happy that I got the $1,500. So here we go. I lost a huge hand when at 50, 100, somebody raised to 250. There's four of us. I was in the big blind with pocket deuces and the flop came deuce, queen, nine. I checked, there was a better. I raised, they called, turn was a king. I checked, he bet uh, like 400. I raised it to 1100. He raised it to 3500. I made the call. Uh, does he really have 10 jack here? Uh, River's a jack. He goes, check, check. He did have 10 jack. Uh, so I lost like 3,500 chips out of my 10,000 on level two. Ouch. Wednesday night poker league, I was down to 4,200 chips uh, with blinds at three and six. There's four limpers in front of me. I'm in the small blind at ace queen. It looks like a perfect squeeze spot. I shove all in. I get called by ace seven. I win that one. Then with blinds at four and eight, I had about 9,500 chips. There's a raise uh, to 1,500 and a call. I shovel in for about 9,500 chips. Comes back to the button, Ben. He snap shoves all in. He's got the big stack. Everybody else folds. Ben has pocket aces. Queen in the window. <laughs> so I ended up going to about 17,000 chips, 18,000 chips, and lost one big hand. Back down to, but I have 15,000 at second break with about, what, 15 players left. So I am doing fine after being short nearly in the entire night. Wednesday Poker League. After all that trouble in the early rounds, we are at the final table of nine. There they are. Nine of the, I suppose, best. Or something. <laughs> something like that. But I'm dealing, so I can't do much filming. Steve bet 5,500. I went all in. And now we're waiting for these guys. He won't do one. He's called. He's called. He's called. And four, that's 14 and 3. Mr. Bill, right. good luck to whoever needs it, guys. Ace King against Pocket Tan. You're right. There we go. Can you see that swing? It doesn't get any easier than that. Ba dum bum. Ba dum bum. Mm. Bum. He's got the spade. Mm. 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 Mr. Bill, poker down. I am down in ninth. And Mr. Bill, poker is out. 
All right, the UB the villain hand from last week. Well, there was good, and that is most of you guys have commented that you absolutely love the format and you like thinking and giving me feedback on that. So that's the really, really good. The bad was evidently I didn't explain myself very well. I didn't explain my thought process because I got lots of comments about how I'm an awful, terrible player. How can I ever win? That I do stupid things, that I do silly things. And maybe some of that's true. So one of the two things is going to happen. Either you guys are going to learn from me or I'm going to really truly be exposed as just being awful. <laughs> Hopefully it's the former. So this time we're going to go back through the hand and I'm going to give you my thought process in each step of the hand. Blinds are 50, 100 and you are in the hijack with queen of clubs, ten of clubs, checks to you, you make it 225, I am on the button and I make the call and everyone else folds. So pre-flop, I'm on the button, and the villain, Ed Garza, bets 225. Um, I'm on the button, I don't have a great hand, but I do have position, and I normally have a pretty darn good read on Ed. Uh, two players behind me, which I didn't tell you guys this, were both uh, players who don't raise very much, so I was not really concerned about that. They ended up both folding, so I was fine to go heads up against a player that I think I can read well in position. So the flop with 600 in the pot comes two of diamonds, six of diamonds, 10 of clubs. You lead out for 200 and I make the call. All right, he bets 200 into 600 and I make the call. Uh, pot's giving me four to one. So how many of you guys, let's see by show of hands, how many of you guys think I'm calling this because I'm trying to hit a gutter ball? Oh my goodness, there's always one or a few who think that. That's not it at all, people. No, I was counting cards that are good cards for me. You might call them outs. You might not call them outs because they wouldn't give me necessarily the, the best hand. I think they will give me the winning hand, though. In other words, I can barrel on diamonds. I could hit a seven, which would give me the nuts. And those are the 13 cards that I counted. I actually probably could have counted some more. I could have counted another two, maybe a six. Um, the player who raised pre-flop, he's almost always playing just good cards. So he doesn't have a two, he doesn't have a six. <laughs> so if another two or another six comes, I can count that also. I didn't, I counted 13 other cards, but I didn't call trying to hit a gutter ball straight, guys. If I hit a gutter ball straight, one of the three of the 13 outs were the gutter ball straight. And of course, those are the best outs. But the other ones, I'm not doing this just for outs, never. And of course, anytime you have 13 outs after the flop, you're about 50%. So if it's 200 to win 600 and I've got 50%, that should be a call all day long. I did get some comments that there was some merit to raising the flop and I agree with that. I didn't take that line, but that line would also work in my opinion. A few other things. Ed does not slow play his hands. So when he makes a rather small bet into this pot, I don't think he's strong, strong, strong. I think he's got something. He probably has a 10, um, but I don't think he's terribly strong. That means I think I can take the pot away later on a good scare card. It's very early in the tournament. You know what? People don't like to go to a tournament, pay their money, only play for 20 minutes and go home. Um, I do extremely well at the beginnings of the tournaments because I take advantage of the fact they don't want to go home. So they will fold hands they might not otherwise do in the middle or near the ending of a tournament. The pot odds are definitely good enough. The implied odds are even better. However, there is a scare here. Reverse implied odds. What if he has diamonds, right? Well, I'm in position. And the way that this player plays, if he hits a flush, he's leading out. I can easily get away from my hand and fold. Um, so all of those things added up together is, to me, this is a perfect spot. Uh, on the turn, there's a thousand in the pot, and it comes the king of hearts. You bet 400, and I make the call. The turn with being the king, all right, the king hits his range very, very hard. Although, he does make another rather small bet, so I'm not so sure he has a king here. All I know is that if I've still got to hit a seven or a diamond, I need to win 22% of the time to break even based on the pot odds. 
I'm getting about 27% uh, to win, so I should make the call there. Again, implied odds. If I happen to hit the seven, I'm gonna win a lot more. But even with the diamonds, there's enough odds for me to continue here. Did I mention that I have position on the player? I have position. I have the ability to fold if he hits a big hand and it has cost me not that many chips. The river now has 1,800 in the pot. It's the seven of spades. You decide to check it to me and I bet 2,100. Okay, the river being the best card that I could possibly hope for in giving me the nuts was almost irrelevant. And what I mean by that is I had a plan I carried out the plan. The plan was if I hit a diamond or if I hit one of the sevens, I am going to barrel. I happened to hit the best card. There was a seven that gave me the nuts. So even if he called, I was obviously good. If he, I had hit a diamond, I would have absolutely barreled. I don't think he would have called a diamond. I, in fact, the reason why he called on the seven, because he put me on diamonds. So was that card a little bit lucky? Um, yes and no, right? It was lucky that it was one of the outs that gave you the nuts. But again, I think in my head I have 13 outs. So it doesn't matter which of the 13 outs that comes, I think I'm gonna win the pot on any one of the 13. It just happened to be one of the three that was the best for me. In the actual hand, Ed Garza was the villain and Ed tanked for a long time and called. I had eight, nine for the nut straight. Okay, I hope you guys learned something from that little uh, going through Mr. Bill's head. Ooh, that's a scary thought. <laughs> um, I hope you don't think I'm just a horrible player just because of that. If you do still, hey, <laughs> that's okay. But better for me would be that I explained myself well. You understand why I did what I did and there was actually some method behind my madness. Hey, it's Sunday night at the Jack Casino. Just got here at 9.30. About to play a session, so let's go. The table I sat at was certainly not like the table last week, which was the friendly info gathering table. <laughs> this was more of your regular old guys who were just trying to win money, uh, some better players, and it was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't unfriendly, but definitely not like last week. So about my third hand, I'm in the hijack with pocket jacks. I have $270. Uh, the plus one limps. I make it 15. The button and the plus one both call. The flop with 49 in the pot comes three of hearts, four of hearts, queen of clubs. The P1 donks into me for $16. Hmm. Usually a donk bet is a medium strength bet. I don't think they're really that strong. So I raise it up to 40, the other guy folds, and the P1 tanks for a little bit and makes the fold. So this next hand was played against a Vietnam War veteran. I told him that I appreciated his service and all the veterans out there, you guys are just amazing to me. Anyhow, I'm in the big blind with pocket nines. I have $260, the plus one, who is the loose veteran. Uh, he makes it 13, the small blind calls, and I make the call. Flop with 39 in the pot comes nine of diamonds, two of clubs, seven of diamonds. Small blind checks, I check, and the veteran makes it 27. His small blind folds. I raise it up to 65. Now this veteran player has, uh, he was very, very loose. Definitely a station, uh, but he ended up making the fold. When this happens, I sometimes wonder, man, should I really raise with top set? But it is a flush board, a possible straight board. So, and I also think the philosophy is, hey, if you're ahead, get the money in. So sometimes they're gonna fold, a lot of times so you make a lot of money. So not always sure if this is the right play, but I think in general it's right. In fact, if I smooth call here, another diamond comes or a straight card, and he ends up winning the pot, then I'm mad at myself that I didn't uh, raise the pot. There were a few of us who were straddling pretty much every hand. I was on the button with $320. I was straddling the six. Uh, I had five of spades, seven of spades. The big blind is my veteran friend. He makes the call. Everybody else folds, even the small blind, and I check my option. So there's 13 in the pot to a flop of nine of hearts, seven of clubs, four of diamonds. He leads into me for $12. I have middle pair. This guy is definitely um, a little bit loose, so I make the call. The turn with 37 in the pot is the ace of clubs. He leads for 20. I don't believe him on the ace. He would have raised pre-flop. 
So I make the call. So the river with 77 in the pot comes the four of clubs. He checks. I think about betting. Instead, I table my hand face up. He sees my seven. He folds. And then the dealer starts to ship him the pot. I said, hold on a minute. <laughs> it was check, check. He said, yeah, but you mocked. No, I didn't. I put my cards in face up. They're still face up. And everybody at the table agreed. So <laughs> it was kind of interesting. <laughs> My veteran friend, though, was not very happy with my call. He was kind of muttering that I called him down with only a seven. All right, the next hand, I'm under the gun. I have $340. I have pocket sixes. I limp in. Uh, the cutoff is a really good young player. He makes a 15, and I make the call. We're the only two. So the flop with 34 in the pot comes 3-3-4. Three, three, he I check. He makes a 20. I'm too good to fold right here so I make the call. The turn with 74 in the pot is another four. I check. He checks behind. Maybe he thought I was trapping. I don't know. Or he didn't have anything. The river, 74 in the pot. Bingo bongo, the six of diamonds. Ooh, that's a good card. Uh, I lead out for 65 and he tanks for a long, long time and folds, unfortunately. Man, I wish he'd had an overbear. I don't think he did. Of course, I think we'd have heard about an overpair on the turn also, and then, I don't know, depending on the bet size, maybe I couldn't have called. All right, the next hand, I have queen of diamonds, eight of diamonds on the big blind, and I have $400. Uh, the veteran to my left, uh, he's in the straddle for $7. He's very, very frustrated. He had lost a few hands. In fact, he had gotten rivered, I believe, on the hand previous to this one. It checks all the way around to me. I call and the veteran just checks his option. Uh, the flop with 15 in the pot comes eight of diamonds, four of spades, four of hearts, and it goes check, check. The turn is a very good card. It's the queen of spades. I check, he bets $10, and I make the call. The river is the two of hearts. Uh, I check. He makes a really large bet for this size pot. He bets $50. <laughs> Man, I don't know if I can believe him. He is frustrated. He's been bluffing a lot. Uh, of course, he could also have a four. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I do make the call, and he throws his cards down. He had nine three of spades, and I won a pretty good one. So on this next hand, I'm in the plus one with jack of clubs, nine of clubs. I have $550. The end of the gun, who was a decent player, wasn't great, wasn't horrible, but was running really, really good. He made it $8. That's not very much. I make the call, middle position two, the button, and the big blind all call the $8. The flop with 41 in the pot comes jack of spades, three of clubs, four of spades. It checks to me. I make it 20, and only the end of the gun pre-flop razor makes the call. The turn, 81 in the pot, is the 10 of spades. Uh, he checks to me, I make it 35, he now raises to 85. I've seen this guy play enough for a couple hours that there's no way I don't ever think he's bluffing here. So I fold, and he shows me ace king of spades for the nutter butters. Mm. Betting into the nuts, you probably usually don't win. Not very often. <laughs> Well, kind of a disappointing night at the old Jack Casino. I never really was down much. I did get up about three, no, about $260. Ended up only winning 80. So, kind of disappointing. Never lost a big hand, just I got up 260 and then I couldn't win any hands after that. So I lost, you know, 15, 20, 25 dollars at a time and, until I won only 80. So, oh well, break goes. All right, this week at, uh, Choctaw, the WPT is going on, and I'm hoping I can go up there either on Friday or Saturday. Saturday has a one day 100K guarantee, and then the WPT uh, main event is the next weekend. I don't know if I can play that unless I can satellite in, but maybe I can get enough time to go play. We'll see. Hey, a shout out to one of my buddies, Rob Jenkins. Rob had surgery this week. Uh, Rob, I'm hoping you're recovering well, and we're praying for your 100% healing. Rob's going to be at the World Series of Poker exactly the same dates as me. Actually, so is Stone, and my son Billy's going to be there. We're just going to have a great time together. All right, very exciting. The World Series of Poker is almost here. Uh, the dates, I will be in Las Vegas for the World Series of Poker from June 7th to June 16th, first trip one. 
June 23rd through June 30th for trip two. And then we'll see about the main event. Maybe I can get there for that too. If you're at the World Series of Poker, please, please stop by, say hello, get a picture with me, uh, all that kind of good stuff. All right, with that, guys, I wanted to say thank you very much for watching and subscribing and listening and commenting, and I hope I explain myself better. And if you guys got anything that you can tell me or help me with, then uh, write me a little note, send me an email, follow me on one of the uh, social medias, and I will see you guys all next week. You have a blessed, wonderful week. Bye.